here, here's the, the interesting thing that, that I've started to notice recently is when you look at the entertainers out there, and because this is the world that I, I function in most of the time, and you look at, like, for example, the Chris Browns of the world who are constantly getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, they're getting arrested, they're getting into fights, they're getting into social media wars and so forth. The type of people that you see doing this over and over again, the one thing that they seem to have in common is that none of them are ever married. Okay. And the thing is, is that when you have someone in a powerful position and you don't have a wife mm -hmm. or a very strong partner that's willing to give you their opinion with zero ulterior motives you are going to be in a very different place than when you have a bunch of employees around you that know at any moment, if they upset you, they're fired. Mm -hmm. They're not going to give you the same level of advice and no true success can come from one person. It always comes from a team. I agree. So you, so you have these situations, because when you look at, for example, the Jay-Z's of the world, you look at the Ludacris's of the world, or you look at Kanye these days, they're not getting into fist fights. They're not going into these situations that are so self-harming mm -hmm. because they have someone in their corner. Marriage calms and you down. It, 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 it matures you, yeah. it calms you down. But here's what I would say, with situations like with Chris Brown and other high-profile celebrities, I also think the media deliberately and in a very biased and discriminatory fashion only shines a light on their public behaviors that are less than acceptable to the rest of us. They don't shine a light when they do positive things in the community. They don't shine a light when they do things that are advantageous to society because that's not popular. Let's be honest, the media loves sensationalism. So they will run out when Chris Brown gets the police called on him, but they won't run out when Chris Brown goes to the community center and spends his own money in his own time working with the young children there. So we have to look at the biased behavior of the media. But I agree with you. Marriage does calm you down, but if you are a high profile personality, as I am, you often have to be careful as well in your search for that queen because there's so many ulterior motives. Often women may want the package, but not the personality. So if I look at me, for example, I come across a lot of beautiful black women, excellent choices for wife. But the reason I'm slow to choose is because I know that for a lot of women, they will love the package. He's a PhD, he's self-employed, he's building a school, he's extremely popular, I know he can take care of me. But you're not looking at the other side, that this man is walking the same path as a Marcus Garvey, as a Malcolm X, as a Mega Evans. He might not come home tomorrow. Everything he got may be taken. Are you getting with Dr. Umar to help him achieve his mission? Or are you getting with Dr. Umar so he can hope, help you live the American dream? So you have to be very, very careful. I always say that if I knew I would be blessed or cursed to be given this responsibility, I would have had my wife beforehand. I would have made sure I had her. If someone would have came to me and said, listen, 2009, your career is going to go to a whole nother place. You're going to be used to try to do something important for your people. I would have found a wife. It's hard to choose them now because you never know the ulterior motives. And that's just for me. I'm not the multi-million dollar rapper, actor. For them, I know it got to be even worse. Well, yeah, I mean, J. Cole married his high school sweetheart, you know, before he ever became Excellent a choice. Or anything else like that. Because yeah. you knew her before the fame. But sometimes you don't have those high school sweethearts that are still available. Many of them have already found a husband. So sometimes it's difficult to go back to safe space. And then also when you're in such a quote unquote controversial line of work as I am, not every woman wants that. I mean, if you look at some of the wives of some of our greatest uh, freedom fighters, a lot of them, the wives did not want the life. They come to accept it. They learn to live with it. But I think if you ask some of them, if you could do this all over, would you have done this? Married a man who you knew would be assassinated, you know, 10 years into the marriage and you're left to raise those children with little or no support. I don't know if they would have went with it. So I think sometimes it has to be a calling. I think women, I think some of these women, I think Coretta Scott King, Betty Shabazz, Amy Garvey, uh, Mrs. Evers, I think, you know, that they were chosen by divine providence to walk with those men because it takes a special woman to walk with a man who's always walking around with that X on his chest. Well, yeah, I mean, I actually interviewed uh, Yasha Shabazz, uh, mm -hmm. Malcolm X's daughter recently, and she mm -hmm. talked about...
My first book, Growing Up X, speaks to all of that. And it speaks mostly to uh, the will of my mother. You know, how she managed to smile, you know, in the face of her children, but was obviously in pain, you know, behind closed doors. She had six babies. She raised each one of us. She sent us to the best schools that she could because she knew that education was very important. Um, she didn't get any public grants or anything. She worked very hard to make sure that her husband's girls were properly educated, were properly um, self-sustaining, you know, that they were proud to be women, that they were proud to be people of the African diaspora, that they were proud to be Muslims. Going back to our earlier conversation about athletes being glorified, but not academic achievers, it's the same thing in a larger African-American community. We glorify the entertainers and the athletes. We don't glorify the freedom fighters. You understand? We will spend $500 to go see someone in concert, but we won't spend that $500 to necessarily build a hospital or, or factory or distribution network. So we have to look at how we, as a community, reward those who ignore us and punish the ones who die for us. It's one of the central contradictions within our political reality. Yeah. Well, you had a situation a while back where uh, this woman who called herself the conscious stripper, <laughs> I, knew. Uh, I, I guess put you on blast. Like, what was that whole situation about? It's an old situation. It was a sister that I met. Okay, very beautiful. Uh, I met her down in Florida, Marcus Garvey celebration. I was the keynote, my Rastafari brothers hosted the event. Ironically, you're asking me this because I was just in Jamaica two weeks ago to keynote the Marcus Garvey celebration and uh, the same brothers brought me there. Shout out to Priest Dougie. Um, and so I met her. I was signing books and taking pictures at the end of my lecture. I think it was Black History Month or Kwanzaa. It was 2014. And uh, she waited by the side for me. Very beautiful woman with her son. Came up after. You know, she introduced herself, said, I'm a homeschooling mom. I'm trying to start a homeschooling network. I love what you do. And I'm from Philly. I said, for real? You from Philly? I'm from Philly. She says, yeah. I said, well, you come up. Let's connect, which we did. Um, and then on May 17th, the anniversary of the Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court decision, I'm at a graduation for a friend of mine, Spelman College, down in Atlanta with her family. And all of a sudden, social network went crazy. And to this day, and of course that was two years ago, but to this day I still don't know what the motive was. I still, we never had an argument. I don't know why that happened to this very day. I don't know if she was sent to do that. I don't know if there was something I did that she felt disrespected her. Uh, I don't know what the motive is to this day, you know, but it happened and it made me even more quote unquote paranoid about getting to meet women because you never know what they're going to do the day after they meet you. Yeah, I mean, I guess one of the things that I guess she claimed was that you had lost a, a $1 million donation from an I NBA did. player. I did, and I can tell you that. Oh, because, oh, so that's actually true. Oh, it's very true. It's very true. I was contacted by a relative of one of our top five NBA basketball players. Okay, I don't want to call his name because I really appreciate him even considering to do this, given who I am. And we were in talks for a couple of weeks, talking back and forth. He know about you. We got the book. We, we we moving. We moving. That whole thing dropped with her. I'm in Washington, D.C. I'll never forget it. I'm about to speak at a juvenile detention center's conference. I'm backstage. I get the email. I'm sorry to tell you this, but he cannot be associated with that type of uh, energy or whatever it was. He won't be able to get a donation. Soon as I read the text, they came and said, the kids are ready for you. I couldn't even get out my seat. I had to take about five, 10 minutes to get myself ready. I was about to cry. I ain't going to, I was going to cry. I just lost a million dollars because of bad decisions. Now, there's the chance that they wasn't going to give me the money and simply use that as an excuse. That's always a possibility. Be that as it may, the bottom line was, I would have never even known if that was the truth had this never happened. So it did cost me the million dollar donation. I was this close. And that dropped right before they was going to make the decision. One of the most unfortunate things in my, I'll never forget it because of when I find out right before I go talk to some young people. And that's when I saw it. I wish I never checked that text right then because it messed my whole day up. So you've never talked to her or anything else like that after the No, after she, the she sent me a couple text messages. Uh, this would probably be 
I want to say a couple months post scandal, because again, that was two months, two years ago almost, um, but I didn't respond because I anticipated that that was more of a setup because I heard she was working on a book and all this other stuff, which was quite interesting since only saw you three times in the same week. Three times in the same week. What book can you write off of three times in seven to nine days? So, but nonetheless, you know, I still hear she's out there lurking. She's still befriending people who know me. It ain't over. Oh, she's not done. I thought she was. She's not. She's done. But all I can say is I don't hold it against her. I made the bad decision. I take full responsibility for that. I just have to try to choose better.